I'm Dawn, and this is where Shabby Meets Bling. I, of course, as usual, uh, this week I went uh, thrift store shopping and I came across some really cute things. I came across this little wood cutout. And to me, it looks like part of a, a crate, but easily to, you know, to make if, if you don't have one. And I know you can buy these retail, but uh, so I picked it up. I thought Valentine's Day is on its way and it looks a little rustic, but I thought I could glam it up, do something French country or cottage farmhouse chic with this little number. And I already know what I'm gonna do with it. So I'm gonna share that with you and that's the project for today. I am going to make out of this, I'm going to make a Valentine's box, uh, candy Valentine, little, the little boxes that you you buy most of them are are cardboard now but this one was a cute little metal one i picked up i'm also going to do something fun with this but i am going to make the the valentine candy heart box out of this this was actually a scrap of piece of wood off of a pallet and i'm going to just trace it cut it out and then we'll have our lid i'm going to take my original piece that's going to be the, the actual bottom. I'm going to flip it upside down and I'm just going to trace it on this scrap wood. I'm going to find where there are no holes. You can see this is a scrap, but I'm telling you, I keep all my scraps of everything. And we'll cut out the lid. Let's see if I avoided all the holes. I did. Yay. And this is the prettier side, plus it's gonna get painted. So, there we have our cutout. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use some scraps from a project. It was a fence project, a fencing project, and this is cedar. This is also cedar. So, gonna cut little strips to go all the way around it, nail and glue it to create the box part. And of course, paint, you know I love to paint everything going to be using both of these paints in combination. Not quite equal amounts, a little more of the antique white than the white. And I'll be adding water because this is a wash. And I figured the more water, the merrier, because it, you can always add more. Very, very difficult to, to get paint off of an absorbent wood like cedar. So I'll be painting the entire bottom of my box. If I need to add a little bit more, I can add a second coat. And I'm gonna paint the inside only of my little wood cutouts that are gonna be the perimeter of my box. Now that my base has been whitewashed, now it's time to attach the little side pieces on. And these will go all along here and I'll paint this side and the tops after they're all attached, but they will go all along the outside and I'm going to glue them with a good wood glue. And I'm going to use this sweet little gadget. Uh, it's called a pin nailer and this is what the pin nails look like. So gotta get it in there nice and straight when you use this thing, but boy, it'll hold, hold just perfect when uh, the glue and the pins are in place. My box has been finished, pinned and glued. Now I'm just finishing the whitewashing process. I've had to go over it twice in some areas because of the darker cedar. Now it's time to decorate the lid. I'm starting with some really fine crocheted lace and I'm going to take it all the way around the perimeter. And now I'm going to add some detailing on the top. I'm going to use that same crochet lace and some metallic ribbon. And I'm going to line the other side with that lace as well. And then over top of it, I'm going to add this beautiful metal ribbon. I love this. I'm not overly fond of the color for this project though, so I've painted it antique gold. And there you have it. But the top's not finished yet. <laughs> it needs more. 
I'm going to use the same metallic ribbon and I'm going to create little pleats and I'm going to take it all the way around the exterior of the lid. There it is. But guess what? I'm still not done. I'm going to create a bow and I'm going to use the same metallic ribbon and metal ribbon to create my loops. And I'm just going to fold them over and I'm going to create five loops. I've also made a metallic rose to go in the center out of that same metallic ribbon. I'm gluing the sides of the metal ribbon and just laying the metallic over top and then folding them over to create my, my loops. If you notice, I have cut the inside of my loops into little points so they fit together really nice, almost like a, like a pie. And I have added a metallic bow underneath. For a little more dimension and I'm hot gluing everything into place. My Valentine's candy heart box is complete and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I did add a couple of other little things to bling it out even a little more. I created some leaves out of that same metallic ribbon as well as an inner bow and I added some ivory rhinestones. But it is done. And here we have it. Here's the lid. I did add so I can hang it on the wall and I'll show you how I did that in a little bit. But I did leave the box empty because that way I can use it for real entertaining. I can still maintain the integrity of the heart box itself. But let me show you how I hung it on the wall with the faux candy inside. I did create all the faux candy and I actually cut out another almost identical to the lid whitewashed it and glued everything to it. You can see here I added the metallic ribbon and the metal ribbon to the side of my box as well so it all coordinates. Very happy with this. It's hanging on a little very awkward corner angled wall in my dining room but I love the way it looks. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did give it a like, share it with your friends and family. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell for notifications of all my upcoming videos. And once again, this is Dawn with Shabby Meets Bling. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.